And now we're going to hear from uh, two more people who've come on to Mastermind as business partners. Um, very often people come on with uh, a family member, relationship partner, or business partner. So we've got two, uh, two ladies who are business partners who've achieved amazing things. So please put your hands together and help me welcome Monica and Christina. So oh, good morning everybody. Simon completely conned us. We thought we were talking to our friends that we've been with for the last 11 months. But hello to all of you. It's nice to see you and well done for joining Accelerator. So uh, a little bit about Christina and I. We have been together as business partners and friends now um, yes. for more than 25 years. And we started off in life in IT consultancy working in hospitality, and then we moved into retail, where we were in a startup business, which we took forward. So the business was called ProLogic, and uh, we joined it as fifth, fifth and sixth people in the business. And we developed it into a 10 million turnover business. We did an MBO. We actually started the business in 1988. We then did an MBO in 1999, and we sold on the, or we floated on the AIM market in 2004 at 10 million. And then we got to the point where we thought uh, we'd like to do something different. And uh, we were sort of reaching the end of that journey. So in 2011, we both took the decision that we wanted to exit from the business and move on to another life. And uh, we decided to work with the non-execs of the PLC at the time and uh, force a sale, get the business sold so that we could uh, get some money out that would allow us to move on to the next um, part of our journey and we managed to achieve that in May 2012. Not a great time of year to be selling businesses from 2008 till 2012. Didn't get as much out of it as we'd hoped. We'd always thought we'd got this great nest egg that was going to see us through the future and actually what we got out was a lot less. So we had to do something that was going to make that money work very hard for us and was going to give us the future nest egg that we had always thought we might get from ProLogic. And so that's why we started to look at what we can do and how can we actually make that money work for us? And that's where Monica... Mm. So during the over. year that we were selling the business, I had always known, well, for probably forever, really, I would uh, go into property. My father was a developer. My, all of my family are some way connected in property. And to me, it's solid, it's reliable, I can see it. And uh, it doesn't break down as much as IT. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so um, I thought, well, well take my money out of ProLogic and I will go and invest in property. That's easy, isn't it? Um, and then I opened up the Sunday Times one day and saw that there was, um, a, a, at the Excel Center, there was going to be a property show. And so I thought, oh, if I'm going into property, maybe I ought to go along to a property show and educate myself a little bit. And I saw this thing called HMO. I knew I was going to buy property and rent to students because I'd already done that once purely because I had my son at university, and it was a sound investment. So I thought, ah, oh, HMO, right. I obviously do need to learn a little bit because there's terminology and all sorts of stuff probably goes on with this. So I turned up at that show and uh, saw a salesman called Simon Zucci, <laughs> um, who I can still see perched on that stool. <laughs> and uh, I thought, well, I'm going to do things differently now, different to the way I've ever done it before. And there was a form on the uh, chair which I would never have filled in before. Filled it in and knew I was going to win Quick Start, and I did. So I went along to Quick Start, and I took a student with me so that I could listen to what he thought about this HMO world. And I learned a lot more on Quick Start than I expected to, because obviously everything's covered in a very fast rate. And on Quick Start, I was sold on the three-day accelerator, which you guys are on. And I just thought, you know what, that's worth doing. So I had this bright young student beside me who I knew very well who said, Monica, you're a fool. You can do this on your own. You're a bright, intelligent woman. Why are you paying someone else to educate you? And I said, well, there's the difference between a mature woman and a young man. I know I know nothing. Of course, you know at 25, you know everything. <laughs> so... <laughs> 
So I signed up for the course, and all the way through, of course, I've always been in close contact with Christina. She's always known everything I'm doing in my life. I didn't know life. what I was going to do either, no. so I, I was mm. not in the same clarity no. of thought as Monica. So I, I said, I'm on off on this wagon. accelerator weekend, and she said, I'll come. So then we did the accelerator course, yep. and um, prob actually by coffee break on day one, I had said to her, watch out, we'll leave on day three, lunchtime because it will all be hard sell on this mastermind thing he does. Mm -hmm. So coffee break, day one, we said, I think we'll be doing this mastermind thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say, Simon isn't just a salesman. There's a lot more to him than that, as I've seen month on month on month. So um, we are very pleased that we joined Mastermind. And so now we'll take you on to what we've done So who we, we are joined. today? So yeah, so we did that mastermind. We decided that we were going to set, set, um, take on the program. We knew that for us as individuals, this was the way forward for us to build our business. So we um, established TMB Property Solutions, which is Taller Main and Baker Property Solutions, very inspiring name there. And uh, that was the starting point. It gave us a focus. We also um, did our goals. We did our reason why, which we'll talk about in the next mm. slide. But we've basically achieved the portfolio of one million plus. We've purchased property to the value of 863,000 and our un annual gross rent at the moment is 97,000. I have to be honest that when we signed up for this and when we looked at this, it was definitely something that we thought that would be nice. That would be quite a good thing to do. And we did build a strategy and we did put a, a whole focus as to how we were going to do it. Did we really think we would do it? Probably not. But we knew we'd we were try. Honest. But we knew we would give absolutely everything to it. And that was what we were going to go for. We've got families that we have to look after. We've got lots of other pools in our time. So we weren't able to do the sort of real focus that um, obviously Dan was able mm. to do. But, you know, we had to balance it all. We had to just try and make it all work. So we were clear on what we needed to do. And we set out doing it. And uh, this is how mm. we did it. So um, we actually have over the year bought a freehold property where we split the title. We've bought HMOs, which we set out to do, and we have worked very hard on developing our first real joint venture partnership with uh, two chaps who are based in Essex, who we met at um, the uh, Canary Wharf Pin. And um, so that's, so we'll go into more detail about uh, the things that we've done, but um, the, the first thing was, going to the PIN meetings. Everything actually has happened as a result of us attending those PIN meetings. I used to call her the PIN tart. <laughs> and it's true. Uh, <laughs> it's true. So um, that's really what we wouldn't have looked at. I, I didn't know what HMO meant, first of all. I didn't know that buying a freehold and splitting the title would give you um, the equity that it gives. So I wouldn't have known to do any of those things, and we certainly wouldn't have known to enter into a joint venture agreement <coughs> with people. So now we'll go into a little bit more. Just before that, yeah. we'll talk mm -hmm. about the freehold mm -hmm. that we bought. Um, it was on the market at 385. I'm doing that. Oh, you're doing that later, yeah. are you? Sorry. Mm -hmm. When it comes up, this is me doing. This is. Right. Okay. <laughs> this is the uh, freehold property. Now, um, we went to the first ever. Um, Southampton pin meeting hosted by Bernie and Lynn and uh, it's been interesting to see how they've progressed over the year as well and so we connected with Lynn very quickly we said look we don't know we want to find property she said she sourced property so we were looking at a few properties with her went to look at one rejected it and she said oh last night I got a call about this would you be interested and um, we said no that's not for us that's going to give an 8% ROI that's way below. Um, so that's for a novice investor. This was now May, you see, and we were, you know, moving on. So um, we then sat down and talked about it and said, actually, understand this. It's a freehold. If you split the title, what can you get from it? So we employed Bernie as our consultant, and um, he advised on how that would work. We then understood that there could be a lot of equity if we went ahead with this. Now, um, I think as James said, Dan said, it isn't always easy. This, I would need hours to tell you the story of how we eventually got this property, which was on the market for 385, we bought it for 320. And the four flats are valued 
um, at 110, and we're now starting to market them, and the freehold is valued at 22,000. So we are very pleased with that, but it took a lot of determination to actually buy that property. And I only found out afterwards I did some things that perhaps you're not supposed to do. But when you're a novice, you can ask questions and do things, and then afterwards say, I didn't realise that that wasn't quite allowed, and you get away with it. And also, it helps sometimes being a woman. <laughs> so uh, that, it, it really has worked very well for us. And as I say, we're going to put it on the market now, but we would not have known to consider that. It would have been definitely excluded from our po portfolio at first look. So that's a little bit about Melville Road. Oh, too many mm -hmm. clicks there. Mm. So um, the next one we're going to mm. talk about, because we are short of time, mm. is um, the joint venture that we did with the Chats in Essex. Um, we decided that we would be up for a joint venture. We met them in Canary Wharf Pin. They talked about their sort of aspirations, what was driving them. We worked out that we had a great synergy together and actually we were all driving towards the same thing. We met them a lot of times. We reviewed what their skills were. We knew what we could bring to the party and we worked out that actually we were very complementary and we would really be able to move something forward. They found this property for us and uh, we didn't resonate with it straight away because it wasn't as attractive as we would have liked but we'd learnt that of course ugly properties are good cash you know generators so we did the um typical thing of some oh we're not sure about that but we they explained to us how it was on the market for a hundred thousand you could definitely get good rental out of it and that was below market value they're normally worth about 130,000. so we thought that's a good idea so we did the before and then we did the after making it very pretty with our female with <laughs> our female touch um, not quite like that, but the property looked ugly inside. It was completely unmortgageable. There was no kitchen. All of the rooms were very, very dowdy and hadn't been decorated for probably 10 years. It was really very, very tired. The people that we joint ventured with had all the skills to be able to do the refurbishment. In the process, we found that we could get a delayed completion. We didn't have to buy an exchange. So we organized a delayed completion and we got all the works done within the first three weeks of um, exchanging on the property. We were then able to get the mortgage people back in and do a new survey on the property and they valued it at 125. So we were able to get a mortgage as per the original arrangement and we know that in six months time we'll be able to refinance this property and effectively get our money out. And this property is cash flowing at 20,800 per annum and um, we've managed to get it fully let um, in the first month. So I think getting to the sort of letting side and driving that forward is a skill that we've still got to drive forward on because we didn't get it let straight away. But four weeks later, we had the property let and it's generating that income for us. So that was a really good result for us. I think when we started this journey, we never imagined you could refurbish something in three weeks. We never you know, imagined that you could do those things so quickly. Having done work on our own homes over the years and it taken months and months, it was quite revolutionary to find yeah. out that you can really do things quickly when you get the right team and the right people together. And so that, that was that one. Mm -hmm. um, and then Hendon, which was the mm -hmm. other one we bought, um, was actually, again, a property that was on the market for 365, and we managed to get it for 335. And again, we've managed to get that fully tenanted with students, and that one's turning over 26,400 per annum. And we converted that to an HMO. It was, a, it was the standard, as we're advised, look for a three bed with two, re with two reception rooms. And actually, it didn't have two reception rooms. It was one big reception room. So we put the wall back up where it had been knocked down and created that fourth room. And uh, again, all those things that we just wouldn't have known. So in summary, uh, how did we get here? Uh, we did as we were told, and it's as simple as that, actually. Yeah. And we've driven down that motorway regularly on a Friday night saying, it's good if we did that last month because it worked. Now we'd better do what we've been told this month. And um, we did know why we wanted to do it. I think, you know, let's not uh, lose sight of the fact we're lucky to have each other. We have the same values, we have the same principles, and there's total trust. And we're doing this for the same reason. We've always provided well for our families. We intend continuing to do so we will give them security all the way through, and that's what matters to us. So, um, you know, the coaching, as James said, has just been fantastic. Darren's not here, but I'd like to thank him, and I know Christina thank will ben. say the same yep. to Ben. Um, we've never missed our coaching calls. As I say, you know, we are pin tarts. We intend continuing to be pin, pin tarts. And um, it's actually, it's not just about being there. It's about saying, oh, that's the person to connect with, yeah. following up with them, having meetings, 
really understanding what you want to do. We make the decision and then it's right, that's your action, that's my action, away we go. Get on and do it and um, support each other. And I loved, the reason I wanted to join this was because I do love being in a team and I do feed from people, as does Christina. We have felt so well supported, everybody's so generous, and um, we really wouldn't have done it if we weren't here with all of you. So thanks very much indeed. And a huge thanks, of course, to my buddy here. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Let's hear it for Monica and Christina!